Okay, guys, apparently it's crazy hair day, so just uh, let's go with it. All right, last time that you read, I asked you for your reading response, what it said at the end of the chapter about how Bright Bill um, was kind of feeling toward Roz when he turned the button off, right? And she didn't come back to life right away. And he said, it felt like forever to me. And you guys were really quick to understand that he's feeling so much love for his mom. He couldn't imagine a world without her. So those minutes felt like forever to him. Good job with that. Today we're going to start chapter 51 is called the autumn. We know autumn is another word for fall. So the season. A vocabulary word you're going to want to know is migratory. So you can try saying that at home. Migratory. So that's a term that goes with migration when birds migrate from place to place. They go from place to place. We also know from our science with Mr. Co that butterflies migrate. So they are migratory also. All right. The days were getting shorter. The air was getting crisper. And one morning, Roz walked out to find a layer of frost on the garden. Autumn had come to the island. The tree leaves, which had been green for the robot's entire life, turned yellow, orange, and red. Then they let go of their branches and floated down to the ground, and the forest gradually filled with the sounds of creatures scurrying through dead leaves. Tree nuts were also falling, thunking onto roots and rocks, and occasionally clanging off the robot. The smell of flowers faded and blossoms withered. All the rich scents and colors of the island were draining away. The animals were also changing. Furry animals were growing more fur, feathery animals growing more feathers. Scaly animals were starting to look for new homes. Yerp, it's cooling off, croaked one frog to another. Before long, it'll be time for sleeping. Yerp, I better start looking for a good hole, croaked the second frog. Have you found one yet? Nah, croaked the first frog. I'll look for a hole next week. For now, I'm going to enjoy the warm sunlight while it lasts. Many of the island's animals were already thinking about their winter hibernation. Frogs, bees, snakes, and even bears would soon disappear and spend the next few months resting out of sight. And then there were the birds. Some birds, like owls and woodpeckers, would spend the winter nesting and eating the island's few remaining edibles. But the migratory birds were preparing for the long journey south to their uh, warm wintering grounds. And among the birds destined to leave were the geese. So I want you to think right now, why is this so important when we think about our uh, one of our main characters, Bright Bill, um, why is this important that the geese are supposed to leave for the long winter? What do you think? Do you think Bright Bill will leave since his mom's a robot? And even though he's a, a technically a goose, what do you think? Chapter 52, The Flock. Brightbill slowly waddled into the nest. He had a confused look on his face. Mama, the other goslings said that we have to leave the island soon, and we won't return for months and months. Is that true? That is true, said Roz. You know that geese migrate south for winter. Will you migrate with us? Said Brightbill. I cannot fly or swim, so I'll have to spend winter here on the island. Can I stay with you? I don't think it's a good idea. I think you should migrate with the flock. How long will migration take, said Brightbill. Where will we fly? When will we come home? I do not know, said Roz. Let's go ask the others. And so the robot and the gosling walked to the pond where Loudwing and her friends were chatting. Hello, everyone, said Roz. Brightbill has some questions about the flock's upcoming winter migration. And we'd be happy to answer them, said Loudwing. What would you like to know, little one? How long will the migration take, said Brightbill. Where will we fly, and when will we come home? It'll take us a couple of weeks to fly south, said Loudwing, depending on the weather. We'll join other flocks at a beautiful lake in the middle of a great sprawling field. And we'll come back to the island after four or five months, said somebody else, depending on the weather. I have this vocabulary word here for you, too, instinct. So it's when you use... The things that are inside of you to make a quick decision. You use your instincts. As they walked back to the nest, Brightbill said to his mother, Lately, I've been feeling this strong urge to fly, not just around the pond or the island, but to go on a long flight, a journey. Those are your instincts, said the robot. All animals have instincts. They help it, you to survive. 
Do you have instincts, said the gosling? I do. They also help me to survive. My instincts are definitely telling me to fly south for the winter, said Brightbill. I just wish you could join us. I'm worried about you while I'm away. Do not worry. I'll be fine, said Roz. How bad could the winter be? So one of your questions is going to be for your reading responses. How would you feel knowing that you had to leave your adult, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, whoever your caretaker is? How would you feel leaving home, your home adult, for four to five months? And why would you feel that way? It's a long time. Chapter 53, The Migration. It was the night before the migration, and Brightville was sleeping fitfully. Roz watched him toss and turn until he finally crawled up into her arms, and she rocked him to sleep, just like the good old days. Early the next morning, Brightville waddled outside and looked at the pond. The water was perfectly still. A few lazy clouds drifted above. Geese were already gathering by the beach. And then tiny claws scampered down from the treetops. So today's the day, huh? said Chip Chat. Perched on a branch, you're going to see so many new things and meet so many new animals. And if there are any squirrels at your wintering grounds, please tell them. Chit Chat said hello. Today is the day, said Brightbill. The flock will be leaving soon. Are you excited or nervous or scared? I'm all of those things, the squirrel whispered. Well, don't worry about your mother. I'll look after her so you know she'll be perfectly fine. Brightbill smiled. I'm afraid it's time to go, said Roz as she stepped out of the nest. Okay, Mama, said the gosling. See you in spring, Chit Chat. Have a nice migration, Bright Bill. The squirrel scampered back to the treetops. Come home with lots of exciting stories, but not too exciting. I don't want anything scary to happen to you. Goodbye. The geese were honking with excitement and hustling around as they made their final preparations. Several of the fathers huddled together, discussing the flight plans, while the mothers took a head count. There you are, Bright Bill, Loudwing honked from the middle of the crowd. We're just about to begin. May I have your attention, please, said the biggest ghost. As mo <laughs> the biggest goose? As most of you know, my name is Longneck, and I'll be leading this year's migration. I'm asking everyone to please join your families for takeoff. Once we're airborne, each family will take its position in our V formation, and we'll start the first leg of our journey. Are there any questions? I have a question, came a booming voice. My son will not have any family with him. Where does he fit into the formation? Everyone turned to Longneck. He can fly with me, said the big goose. I, I hear Brightbill is a very clever flyer. I could use his help at the point. A moment later, the geese began flapping, honking, and making their way into the air. A cloud of feathers floated around the robot and her son. You are not a gosling anymore, said Roz. I am proud of the fine young, young goose you have become. Brightbill fluttered up to his mother's shoulders. Thanks, Mama. The young goose wiped his eyes. Is this where we say goodbye? This is where we say goodbye for now. Spring will be here soon and we'll be together again. I'm going to miss you, said Brightbill as he nuzzled his mother. I'm going to miss you too, said Roz as she nuzzled her son. The goose took a deep breath. Then he shook his tail feathers, flapped his wings, and joined the flock. At first, the geese flew in a disorganized jumble, but each goose slowly drifted into position until the flock formed a wobbly V. At the lead was Longneck, and behind his left wing was Brightbill. They circled in the sky until the V pointed south, and then the geese began their long migration. Roz climbed on top of a tree and watched as the flock slowly faded into the horizon. Chapter 54, The Winter. The island was quiet. The migratory birds had all left. The hibernators were asleep, and everyone else had become their simple winter routines. Everyone but Roz. Now that she was alone, our robot didn't know what to do with herself. She stood in her gray garden and watched a sheet of ice slowly form on the pond. And sometimes she could hear her good friends, the beavers, going about their business beneath the ice. And she wondered when she would see them again. Roz stood there until snowflakes started drifting down from the sky. The flakes swirled in the breeze and slowly piled onto the ground and the, on the trees and on the robot. So she crouched into the nest, slid the stone door behind her, and sat in darkness. Hours and days and weeks went by without the robot moving. 
She had no need to move. She felt, she felt perfectly safe in the nest. And so, in her own way, the robot hibernated. Her body relaxed. Her quiet whirling, whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. She probably could have spent centuries like that, hibernating in total darkness. But, robot hi hi but the robot's hibernation was suddenly interrupted when a shaft of sunlight fell upon her face and carried energy back to her empty battery. Her body tensed. Her quiet worrying slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Hello, I am Rosam, Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz, the robot said automatically. When all of her systems were up and running, Roz noticed that she was surrounded by broken branches and piles of snow. The roof of the nest had caved in, and the lodge was now flooded with sunlight. Roz felt more energized with each passing minute, but she also felt cold, her joints stiff and brittle, and her thinking was very slow. She got up, cleared a spot on the floor, and made a fire. The snow inside the nest began to melt, and the robot sensors began to thaw. And when she was ready, she climbed out through the hole in the roof and into the bright foreign landscape. Right? That's kind of reminding me of us being in our houses right now and how I feel on the sunny days, able to get outside, right, and just kind of take a break from being inside during um, our kind of shelter in place right now in Washington, D.C. So I can totally understand how Roz is feeling, except she's doing it for much longer. The world Roz had known was now covered in a thick layer of snow. Tree limbs bent to the ground under heavy sleeves. The dark pond was pure white. The only sounds were Roz's own crunching footsteps. Faint wisps of steam curled from the robot's body as she trudged through the forest. She plunged her hand into a lump of snow and pulled up on a long stick. She snapped it in half and flung both pieces back into the nest. She took a few more steps and picked up a fallen tree. She hacked it into smaller pieces and flung them back as well. Then she reached down to another snowy shape. But what she pulled up wasn't wood. It was Dart the weasel. He was frozen solid. She stared at his body for a moment, then decided it was best to leave that poor thing where he was. As the robot continued gathering wood, she found more victims of the cold. A frozen mouse, a bird, a frozen deer. Had all the animals' islands frozen? No, not all. There are a few fresh tracks. As we know, the wilderness is filled with beauty, but it's also filled with ugliness. And that winter was ugly. A devastating cold front had swept down from the north and brought dangerous temperatures and huge amounts of snow. The animals had prepared for winter, but nothing could have prepared the weaker ones for those cold winter nights when the temperature plummeted and the wind whipped over the island. Roz returned to the nest where the fire had melted and the interior snow had melted the interior snow to a muddy soup. She took a minute to warm her body by the flames. Then she began her repairs. She patched up the hole in the dome with branches before adding a layer of mud and leaves. And soon the repairs were complete. But, the, but another snowfall might cave in the nest all over again. So she decided to keep the fire going day and night to prevent snow from building up on the roof. The robot brought in load after load of firewood, and each time she went outside, she was reminded of the frozen weasel and mouse and bird and deer. How many other animals were hidden beneath the snow? Before going in for the night, she called out to whoever was listening. Animals of the island, you do not have to freeze. Join me in my lodge, where it is safe and it is warm. I'm going to leave you right there, readers. Do you think that anyone will come? Didn't think anybody heard her call. We will find out next time. I will upload your reading response, so head on over there. Um, and we'll keep going tomorrow. Maybe my hair won't be as crazy. Miss you.